Good morning. Uh, welcome to MBFI up at our Brookdale farm today. Um, I wanted to take advantage of this beautiful fall day um, to do a quick tour around our corn intercrop uh, trial that is being led as a demonstration trial by MBFI based on some producer ideas. So rather than seeing me the whole time, I'm going to turn the camera around. We're going to take a look at some of the crop. So this is an MBFI led demonstration project. This is the second year of this project. Um, in 2020, we're comparing 30 inch to 60 inch row spacing for the corn, looking at mostly yield and quality before the cows graze um, this field early this winter before we get too much snow. Um, and then we'll complete some residue sampling afterwards. So there was two varieties of corn that were seeded, both pride seeds um, that were out in this field. This is one variety and the other variety is further down there. Um, the 60 inch rows have almost a double corn seeding rate as the 30 inch rows um, in, in order to look at similar corn seeding per acre. So the 60 inch double seeded in the row is being evaluated as a way to increase the between row productivity um, of the intercropped species while also maintaining the corn yield. So later this fall, um, before the corn, before the cows graze earlier this winter, we're going to do um, quality sampling and yield sampling of both the um, intercrop species that are located down here and also the corn as well. Um, so the corn was seeded on May 27th um, with our single row disc opener um, corn planter. Um, so the intercrop has a unique potential um, in a role as weed suppression, winter grazing, and maximizing growing diversity. Uh, the intercrop was seeded on July 12th when the corn was about five to six leaf stage, so a little later than we were wanting to, but we got quite a bit of rainfall at the end of June, early July, so the fields were too wet to get on up until July 12th. Um, so there's a variety of species. I'm going to talk about the intercrop species over here in the 60 inch row just because they're a lot easier to see. We have quite a bit of difference. So with it being such a sunny day, um, ideally I would have liked to be out here when the sun was more a little overhead, but with the wind um, getting up today, I wanted to come out before the wind got too high and you couldn't hear me very good. So we do have a wild oat and millet problem in this field. Um, last year there was a cover crop project in this field, but the cows are still gonna eat the wild oats, so we're not too, too worried about that out here. Um, the intercrop species that were seeded, there was um, a gene Italian ryegrass, plantain, chicory, hairy vetch, Melquatro Italian ryegrass, yellow sweet clover, tillage radish, Achillea forage rape, bursine clover, and winter triticale. And we just want to send a big thank you out to our seed sponsors for In Kind. Um, so that's Pick Seed, Imperial Seeds, uh, North Star Seeds, and Zagers Canada. So taking a closer look at some of the species, uh, we have our yellow sweet clover over here. We have our hairy vetch. Um, so we have, where is it? Some of our plantain down in here. Quite a bit of the hairy vetch in here. We do have some weed pressure with thistle as well. Um, just looking for a few more species. Some of the forage rape. Quite a bit of the sweet clover. We have some of the tillage radish over here. So you can see the size of it. 
again some more of the rape for drape um some of the chicory we have a little bit of plantain down in here again lots of the hairy vetch it's come up really well um, there's Italian ryegrass all through here that we can see and the winter triticale. So overall, we're quite impressed with how the species have done in the 60 row or 60 inch row spacing. So we have some more of our brassicas down in here that have, so you can kind of see the size compared to my hand of how they're doing out here. But we're not too worried about, like I said, the wild oats and the wild millet because the cows are still gonna eat that. So this field is gonna be grazed early this winter. And for the corn, we do a strip grazing. So that way they limit feed the cows. Um, Cause if anyone has watched cows graze corn, um, you know that they just go along and pluck off all the cobs first. So we wanna avoid any green overloading by doing restricted strip grazing. So this is the corn for the 60 inch. So you can see there's a bit higher plant density in the row. Um, we haven't taken our yield samples yet. So we'll let you know when we do that later this fall. Um, We'll put some info on there. But as you can see, cobs are well formed. We'll break open one of the cobs here. So this is what the cobs are looking like currently. For those of you who aren't in Manitoba, we did get some frost here the last couple weeks. So the corn has dried down pretty quick over the last couple weeks. Stalks are still green in some parts. So again, this is a 60 inch row pretty high density for the corn, but still pretty tall. I'm just under six feet and it's well, well over my head out here. Um, but yeah, these are, this is one of the 60 inch rows. Get out of here. We did push down one of the rows in here, like we do for putting up fences for the strip grazing. So that way we can get to the varieties easier to sample this fall. Um, so let's take a look at one of the 30 inch rows. So as we can see with the corn, not sure if you can see too well, but this plants are a lower density for the corn plants in the, their row. Um, the cobs, again, we haven't taken any samples, but just on visual observation, the cobs seem a little bit bigger but there's also less plants in the row. So we'll see how the yields measure up when we do our samples. Um, so the biggest difference that we've seen between the 30 and 60 inch rows this summer is the quality of, or the yield of the intercrop species. So as you can see between the 60 inch row to the 30 inch row, there's a lot more shading happening so we'll get down. We have some round leaf mallow for weed pressure. Uh, we'll hop over here to some of the intercrop species. So we still have our hairy vetch down here. We still have some of our brassicas. But as you can see, just size comparison compared to my hand with the other ones. There's some sweet clover. It's a lot smaller did not get the growth the same way that the 60 inch did, but just me sitting on the ground here, you can tell that there's a lot more shading going on. So these plants did not have quite a good of sunlight to grow as the 60 inch did. So just gonna hop over another row here. Still have some of our wild oat weed pressure in here, but we have our intercrop species, lots of the hairy vetch cows like that one. Have some of the chicory in here, but like you can see, it's a lot smaller over on this side, but it, it's coming. So part of the reason um, for the intercrop, so once 
the corn starts drying down and the leaves start dropping, we're hoping that the intercrop species, since they're still green and growing, are gonna keep growing past when the corn has dried down. So um, the samples that we'll be taking out here for forage are quality, yield, and residue after grazing for both the corn and the intercrop. Um, like I said, they're still to come this fall. Our corn is just starting to dry down the last couple weeks. But let us know if you have any questions. Um, since we can't do tours this summer, we're trying to do a few more videos to let you guys know what's happening here. But this one has been a really interesting project that all of us are really excited about. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining in. And this will be saved to our Facebook page. Um, so you guys can view later on too. So thank you and let us know if you have any questions.